Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Airship Therapy Conference 2025. Meet the speakers. Today, we are talking to Nicola Crean. Nicola, how are you? All the way from Glasgow. Fantastic, John. Excited. Excited to be here. Great. Um, you were telling me before we started, actually, that Crean is an Irish, Irish ancestors. Yeah, yeah. All right, you're going to have to dig a little deeper when you get over to Dublin. Absolutely. I can't wait. I'm so excited to come over. There's always I've always known that I've I've got a strong connection to I will you know, everyone knows the Scottish and Irish connection. We're yeah, very similar. Great sense of humor. Um and I love when you spoke about the fun that's brought through the conference. That really stood out for me because if you're not having fun, what's the point? Absolutely. I completely agree. Fun is meant to be part of everyday life. We're all yeah. meant to laugh and smile and all that. Um, so for those who don't know who Nicola Crean is, do you want to give a, a synopsis of your life and how you how you got to be speaking at the Irish Therapy Conference? What brought you here? How long have we got? We've got, a couple of <laughs> got until Sunday, I'm joking. Absolutely. No, we keep going and it's Friday now. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll, I'll be mindful of your time. Um, God, it is a long story, but I'll keep it brief. So... When I um started getting into, I think from a very young age, I always was always fascinated with how the mind works. Yeah. From a really really young age, I always questioned things. I was always inquisitive. Like, you know, I wouldn't just take things at face value. I always wanted to know how does that work, right? And then um, I done. You know, I came from a, a life of a lot of trauma. Um, just from from birth actually from being a baby right up through school um I had multiple issues to deal with like abandonment abuse trauma neglect and things like that and then um I went on to have a, a couple of abusive relationships and I knew that I had to start looking inwards and that if people if other people in the world could turn that around for themselves then so could I and I had this real desire to not only turn my own life around, but to be an example um, to so many other people that they could do the same thing. And I just became completely fascinated with a number of things. But hypnotherapy always really stood out to me. I went and done different trainings um, later on after maybe about eight years of having my own academy, working with children. That was That was the thing that, still is to this day and always will be the thing that really lit me up was was working with these children yeah because you have the nicola cream talent talent academy isn't that what it is the nicola cream coaching academy coaching academy okay so you're working with children and is it to instill confidence in them to help to get over trauma all of it yeah yeah so before i even done any official trainings i, I would just create a safe environment for these children to show up every week where they had this safe space, they weren't being judged, they could celebrate who they were being. And that was all it was. I had no idea what it was about to become. I would get consistent feedback from parents that, oh my God, like, what have you done? My child, that's the first I've saw them smiling for a long time. You've given me my child back. Well, what is it you're doing? And I, I couldn't actually answer them at the time, Don, because I, I was just being me. I was just, I was just giving them what... I wanted I, what I thought I would have needed as a child, and it was just that safe space. Anyway, um, it got to the point where I had mothers coming to me, you know, sobbing their heart out that so maybe their child was like, suicidal, um, had like severe autism, different complex mental health problems, and here's me, you know, with no training at all, and they're coming to me saying, "I've heard you're amazing, you know, you're my last hope," and it was just it felt like magic, John, where they would come to me. I would do my thing and then after it all, everyone would come along and see the the evidence of the transformation that had occurred within these children. And Freddie Jacqueline has been he's been there, he cried his eyes out, and he was just like, This is amazing, you need to keep on doing this work. And that's what kept me going. It was the right, there's something in this and what I'm doing. This isn't just, you know, it's not I, I started taking it a lot more seriously and then really started digging deeper and when I actually done Freddie's training, one of the nights that we had a conversation, 
he was talking about a couple of different techniques that he actually created. And during that conversation, it was like the penny had dropped. I realized that I didn't even know what I was doing, but I was actually creating really powerful techniques, um, anchoring and things like that, that, that just work very, very quickly. And then, um, and so the, the hypnotherapy thing always intrigued me. Years and years ago, before I even trained in hypnotherapy, I'd done a keynote speaking gig in London. And because I was so fascinated with it, I'd read up on it. Um, and I thought, I'm going to have fun with this and just just try and see what happens. And there was 300 people in the room. And I thought, well, what have I got to lose? Nothing, I'm just going to give this a go. And I put everyone in the room, or most of them, I think, into a state of trance. I just put the, you know, I counted them down, done the breath work, and, and they were, I took them to a really beautiful place and they were all there. And I just will never forget that feeling, the feeling that I had. Um, and I thought, this really is like a superpower. I used it um, when I had a really traumatic experience during giving birth to my daughter. I was in labour for 33 hours. I used self-hypnosis for that. And um, when this is that this will inspire people, whether you're watching this and you're a therapist or aspiring, or even just you're just you're just interested in it. I remember um, it was the summer holidays, single mum. I'm at home. I've just lost my best mate and my nan, crippled with um, grief. Just found out that I'm losing my dad back to back with cancer at the age of 57. Just had signed up for Freddie Jacklin's training and got all the paperwork through for that training. And it was like that. And I thought, right, I have definitely bitten off more than I can chew here. What I'll do is, is I'll find out who the main man is and I'll just I'll just ask him if I can back next year because I didn't want to miss out. And I'm the type of person I won't do anything unless I go all in, right? So I'm like, right, this friend to Jacqueline, man, he's going to be very busy, very important. He won't have time to speak to me. So I sent him a message, said to him, can I, um, can I do this next year? So he says, jump on a FaceTime tomorrow. And I said, right, sitting on FaceTime with Freddie. And he says, right, what's going on? Told him everything, bawling my eyes out. There's no way I can do all this training. And he says to me, and I'll never forget this. He said, close your eyes. If you've got five minutes, close your eyes. And he put me under like that. And said to me, not only are you going to do this, you're going to be bleep amazing at it, right? And and as soon as I came off that call, I came downstairs and nothing was ever the same again. And I'd done that. There was people from all over the world. I think there was a couple of hundred people on that cohort. And I finished top of the group for the group um, evidence submission for hypnotherapy. And I say that not to blow my own trumpet, but to to demonstrate the power of hypnosis. And I'm so passionate about it. Absolutely. And you've just finished the uh, Phoenix Rising event where you brought people from all over the world to Glasgow. Um, so ultimately what you're, and that was an event about inspiring people, wasn't it? Isn't that, that's, you know, because I mean, if I, if I look at Nicola Crean, she, you've, you, you're a model, you've, you're an author, you you run the coaching academy and and now you're and I probably missed because you're a journalist as well. Um, you've been with BBC Scotland, so you've varied career. I mean, you've, you've multitasked and multi talented. Um, and in Dublin, you're talking about confidence. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that event that that you just had. Maybe you want to tell people about it, even for for those who may be interested in going next year. But that Phoenix Rising event was about literally celebrating confidence isn't it yeah yes it was it was again it was off the back of um just life life and you know whether it whether it's losing someone close to you or just whatever it may be for me phoenix rising it was about that phoenix rising from the ashes that's where the name came from me wanting to continue to rise you know, after challenge after challenge, heartbreak, grief, to show that it's okay to to um, feel those feelings as a human being, but it doesn't have to be the end. So many people get caught up in and being stuck, whether it's grief or whatever, whatever it may be, and they find themselves stuck in that place. And I'm really driven to 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 lead by example and to show what's possible, and it doesn't have to be difficult. 
And when I actually went to Phoenix um, earlier this year, I won, like, it was like a huge uh, coaching competition that I won. And um, it was, you know, you got to spend a day with all these top coaches, you know, from all over the world and then go and see the Rolling Stones. I'm a huge wow. Rolling Stones fan. So that was like, it was incredible for me. And when I was in Phoenix, I really, really experienced a deep shift where I knew nothing was going to be the same again. And when I came back home, um, I jet lag. I, I'd actually caught pneumonia as well, but I was really ill and exhausted. And coming out the back of that, I was a, a bit of me. I found out that my 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 son, my firstborn, said to me, "Mum, I'm traveling all over the world," and I. And I felt a bit heartbroken and I was like, do you know what? I'm stepping away from everything and just going to be mum because he's grown up far too fast. And then just yeah. right after that, I thought, do you know what? I'm not stopping now. I'm not I'm not stopping now. This doesn't make me less of a mother. It actually shows that you can still be an incredible mum and show what's possible. And, and Phoenix Rising just came to me and I thought, let's put on this event. We've got a mental health crisis in this country. You know, so many people are struggling. Let's put on an event where we can speak from the heart about what's possible. When you rise, when you when you learn that confidence, people think that you're either born confident. Actually, confidence is a skill that anybody can learn. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm. This is when I think of all the different things that I've used over the years to take me from one complete end of you know from you know rock bottom to smashing it out the park when i think back to all the things confidence the skill of confidence was the thing that made the biggest difference and that's why i'm so passionate about teaching it and uh, it, it, it attracted people from all over the world so it was a global event and and i'm i'm proud to say that it made a huge impact and i can't wait to be on the stage and and teach what, what I know and what's made a huge difference. Well, I mean, it, you're, you've lived it. You're the embodiment of it, you know, to having done that, to, to create that event and, and to have it. And I mean, it, you know, th this whole thing of, of confidence and, 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 and self-esteem, which is what you're going to cover um, over that weekend, it's so key because so many people don't have it, whether it's standing in front of a camera, whether it's, you know, what. what you find a therapist themselves are a little bit shy and on yeah. the confident side of it. So um, will you have some tools and techniques that will help them to uh, yeah, their own confidence? Yeah. And that's, I, I mean, I love helping everybody. Um, you know, the child, the, the work that I do with the children, it's just, it's incredible. But over, over the, the, I'd say maybe the last five years, I've really been passionate about, probably since I've done my own trainings, being passionate about helping people that help people so that it has that kind of ripple effect, right? And I was so surprised, like, um, you know, not from a judgmental place, just I suppose I didn't realise it, but when I really started doing different trainings and getting into different things, I didn't realise how many people actually had all these qualifications, you know, on paper, qualified and whatever, different trainings but didn't actually have the confidence and I thought and I thought oh my god what a shame you know that they've got all these incredible skills they've got the heart they really want to help people but but they're kind of hiding away and they don't have this confidence and so for me it feels like a, a, it does feel like a superpower and it's and there's nothing that I love more than to see somebody that does things from the right place and for the right reasons and wants to make a genuine difference in the world and to see them light up with that confidence and bring that, that that ripple effect for me is what it's all about. So is it the passion behind it that drives that confidence? You mean to, for, for, for me, sorry, sorry. Just as, as you're talking there, I mean, I can, I can see the passion in you as you're talking and, and the confidence that's coming from that passion. So is it the passion to deliver that message to to overcome any obstacles is that what drove you through all that in the first place i think so i so, question that actually i've never been asked that before but yeah, yeah and that makes perfect sense and I, and i think that one of the things that i'll talk about is is so many people get into their own heads and they think to themselves right just well phoenix rise is a perfect a perfect example i never thought in a million years um, that I would be able to single-handedly, you know, come up with this idea, create a global event and put it together and it would work. That still blows my mind to this day. 
And what, what, you know, was I scared? Absolutely. I was petrified, right? But I feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And then that's when the confidence comes. I think so many people get into their own heads and wait, they think they've got all this time. I'll wait until the kids leave home. I'll wait until I can divorce, you know, I'll wait until I'm happier, wait until whatever. And actually it's, it's, it's opposite way about it. It's about, nothing's ever perfect. It's never the right time. It's about recognising that it's, it's doing it. You know, we're all going, um, again, it's cliche, but I'm a big believer. There's no such thing as failing. You're either winning or you're learning. It's not going to be perfect. It's, it's about learning and trying. And then as a result of that, being brave and feeling the fear and doing it anyway, that's when the confidence comes. And whether it's your first client or getting on a stage or doing your first live, you are going to be absolutely terrified. But what happens at the end of that is pure gold. And you can't undo that. When you get a little taste for that, you want more. You want to keep on growing. And and then you inspire other people. And that's what I love. And that's beautiful because and it's also true. And I know that from my own experiences, even just with this conference, it's like the growth that has come personally in the midst of all that is just phenomenal. Um, so you're going to be giving a talk in Dublin on the 5th and 6th of April. I can't wait to see you. Um, it'll be it'll be some super weekend and, and and there'll be some history searches on the Korean family first to see if we can yeah. we can find out any anything for you. Um, Nicola, thank you so much. Um, it's going to be a wonderful weekend and we'll see you in Dublin on April 5th and 6th. Cannot wait. And to everyone else, thank you so much. Um, for, for watching and all the details are in www.airshipmetherapyconference.ie and see you all in Dublin on April 5th and 6th. Have a wonderful day wherever in the world you are. Thank you.